The difference between a good guitar and a great guitar is very subtle. Therefore, I think it's very important to study top wood and tone wood because this is going to be the most important factor in building your guitar. I'm going to teach you how to evaluate the tops, how to choose the top. To evaluate your piece of wood, ideally you want it unsurfaced. Either you want it in the billet form or you want it already milled but unsanded or unplaned. Here's a piece of Sitka and what I want to show here is the tightness of grain. Let's first of all talk about tightness of grain. I'm tapping right over the bridge area. If I were to tap out around the edge, that's the left side, the treble side, the bass side. Now that brings up something very important. Talking about left side, right side, treble side, bass side. You need to think of the, of the guitar top as one unit. Don't think of it as right side, left side, bass side, treble. It doesn't work like that. It's one unit. And if you, what you want me to say, what you want to hear on an instructional DVD like this is, okay, if you shave a little bit here on this brace, you, you'll get more treble. Or if you angle it more or less, it doesn't quite work that way. Now, we've heard the, we've heard the cedar. Let's listen to the spruce. They both sound very musical. They've got that strong fundamental. Once the wood starts to put off some steam and is sizzling, I can go ahead and start the bend. I do this by pulling down the arms that are attached to the springs. All right, and now I'll bend the upper bout. And at the waist, I'm gonna rock it back and forth. I can clearly see my waistline on this side. I'm going to rock it back and forth like this. To heat up this waste area. When I feel like it's getting hot enough, go ahead and bend it. I'm applying just a little bit of pressure. I want to make sure that I don't bend it like this or like this. I also don't want to make sure I have a twist in it. Okay, so let's talk about back braces. The Hauser, 37 Hauser, had three back braces. And the dimensions were about 7 millimeters wide by about 15 tall. I used to work a lot in Brazilian rosewood. And the Brazilian rosewood moves around a lot more than the Indian rosewood, so I got used to putting four braces in. I think it adds a lot of extra strength with not a lot of extra weight. So what I do is I come in and I put one at the waist. So I'm going to take a minute and measure how far I want to come in from the edge. On this lower brace, which is the widest one, I'm coming in... Oh, it came out to about 65. That's where I want the, the scallop to be, and I want to go all the way down to 6 millimeters in that area. So make sure you come at your widest points. Travel this way, travel this way, this way, this way. Now the biggest danger when cutting this is to cut it too large. And when you put your bindings and your purflings in there, you'll have slop in there. You don't want that. You want it tight. So if you're going to err, err on the side of caution. So the next tool I'm going to use is a file. This is just a flat file. It's rough. It's coarse. But notice how I've got a safe edge on one side here. All I did was take that and put it on my sander so that anywhere that touches, it's not going to mark up. So if I place that right there and come in and just file this top of the trough back to where it needs to be, I'm not marking up this area. I'm going to keep that perfling line just a little bit back from the center. And I'm going to place a piece of tape on it. And then I'm going to wrap it around. I'm then going to take this binding that I've cut and I'm going to place it exactly on the center line. So in other words, my purfling's back about a sixteenth to an eighth of an inch inside there. And this is exactly on my center line. I'm then going to place a piece of tape on the side. I'm going to push down the binding and the purfling, then I'm going to pull it up with my fingers and put the tape on. So it's finally time to begin carving the neck. 
Now this is a point in the guitar building process that can be kind of intimidating for a lot of people, but it doesn't have to be. I'm going to show you in a step-by-step -step process how to carve the neck. It's a very methodical process. There's no need to get worried, no need to rush it. Take your time and pretty soon you'll have a neck that's very easily playable and in great shape. So we've carved the other side down flush with the heel cap. Now I'm going to take this side down flush with the fretboard. Now as you're doing this, you want to be careful that you don't blow out a chunk of wood and have it run down below the width of the fretboard. So be very careful. You could also come in here and make relief cuts. And let me show you how to do that. All right, when you get all done carving, come in and rub your hand along the neck. Sit down in a plain position. Make sure it is what you want. Check your measurements. Make sure you're indeed 21 at the first fret. And around the ninth or 10th fret, you want to be about 24. If you're a little bit less or a little bit more, that's okay. So let's review. Make sure this fretboard is extremely level. Uh, sand it all the way up to 320 grit. Make sure the taper is proper, half millimeter to a millimeter lower on the base side. It's flat this way, it's flat this way. Everything's cleaned up, all the sawdust is out of the fret slots. So now I can come in and begin doing my fret work. Just some light tapping like that is all it should take. And it is in there, I mean it won't come out. But it's a, a lot easier to put in than the others. So these up here, I'm going to have to be extra careful with. Bridge design is critical to the acoustics of your guitar. You've taken all of this time to thickness the top, brace the top, and voice it, and then you're going to come and glue a large mass to the top of it, a brick in other words, and that's definitely going to affect the sound. So here are some things to consider. First of all is the species of wood. Uh, what I'm going to teach you for the finish in this video, or this online video series, is the French polish method that I've learned. We've all heard the expression that the finish is only as good as the surface underneath it. And that really is true, especially under a French polish. So take your time, follow the steps I'm going to outline here in the next few minutes about how to, to prep the guitar. Make sure that everything is sanded properly, and then we'll move forward with the French polish. So my pad is starting to get a little tacky again, starting to stick. To recap, I've done three polishing cycles. I have leveled it once with 1000 grit sandpaper. I did three more polishing cycles. I leveled it again with 1000 grit paper. And I now have done two uh, le uh, polishing cycles again. The first thing I like to check is my action because now that the guitar is under tension, things may have changed. I want to make sure that I am indeed at three and a half millimeters off the fret at the 12th fret. And I am. I also want to make sure that on the treble side, I am two and a half millimeters off the string, off the fret, to the bottom of the string, and I am. So the action checks out at the 12th fret. That means that my saddle height is correct. <laughs>